to disable the Choice Specs Terrapagos is potentially devastating. But here we go. It is turn one of game one of our final Swiss match of the day. That is the Terrapagos and Chi Yu led for Terran Birdie up against Victor Medina's Amoongus and that Choice Scarf Urshifu. Urshifu there to sort of cover this Amoongus if the Chi Yu is the lead choice from Terran, but alongside of the Terrapagos, that's a very tough call to make. You can try and lock in a KO onto the Chi Yu if you assume it's not going to Terrastalize mm -hmm. following the same logic. You know, the Terrastalization probably wants to go to the Terrapagos right now. But if you do make that play, then the Terrapagos is more than capable of starting to use those Terra Star Storms to deal some really big damage here. I think Terran has to be mindful of the threat of Spore on the opposing side of the field, but that's not going to stop him from doing critical damage mm. off the bat in this game one. All right, well, there's the Terrastalization on the Chi Yu, actually. A little goldfish that could, getting a water typing on its side this time around. This is one of the good benefits of the Choice Specs Terrapagos. You can actually just do big damage with Choice Specs Terra Starstorm without terrestrializing, which allows Chi Yu to survive this close combat coming out from the Urshifu on Victor's side. Now, Heat Wave coming out from the Chi Yu will not be able to do damage to the Amoongus as it did decide to protect itself, but will pick up the chip onto Urshifu and allow. Oh! Oh! Even worse, that is a burn. So even if Terran went for a Terra Star Storm into the Amoongus, as Terran did, this Oshifu is not going to be having a good time for the future. It is burned and Terra Shell is still up. It is not threatening that Terrapagos. Victor making a incredibly safe play there, opting to go for close combat into the Chi Yu, knowing that it will still do super effective damage or neutral damage if that Pokemon does indeed terrestrialize. You also threaten a second close combat into the Terrapagos, but now that it's been burned, the damage that it can do to this Pokemon has been halved. That's going to make it so much easier for this Terrapagos to find an opportunity to attack. But if Amoongus survives, that Terrapagos probably will be put to sleep this turn. Yeah, well, the good news for uh, Victor is that the close combat is still enough to pick up the, key, the KO onto the Chi Yu, which means that this Amoongus is not under threat of either the Taunt or another fire type attack. There is the Terra Star Storm. Even with the Choice Specs, it is not enough to pick up the one hit KO onto the Amoongus, especially without the Beads of Ruin on the field as well, which means that the Spore will be able to connect with the Terrapagos, and Victor has been able to get that Turtle put to sleep. Now, the Urshfu is still out on the field, and you would probably want, if you had not been burned, this would be a prime opportunity to pivot it. Yep. But right now, you kind of just have this Urshifu sitting out on the field doing not a whole lot of anything. Yep. And unfortunately for Victor, if that Urshifu switches out, there's a non-zero chance that Terran will respond with his own Spore mm -hmm. into that slot. So it's a very tough call to make here. If you yep. go for the switch, you could be put to sleep. If you keep using close combat, eventually you're going to go down in one hit. But I think the benefit of getting that damage in while the Terrapagos takes its guaranteed turn of sleep here is critical for Victor. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to be a lot of damage, but it could be enough damage to find a knockout for that slot from something else. Yeah, well, Victor has to switch out the Urshifu here. I just don't know that you would be able to outpace the Pollen Puff threat coming out from the Amoongus as well. Switching in the screen tail, but like you mentioned, this puts Victor at extreme risk of just getting the switch in spored for its troubles. That's actually a double switch, so we're going to see the final Pokemon for Victor, which is the Terrapagos. So making sure to switch in the Scream Tail, which is less dire of, a, of an issue to have Spored in this turn. The Terrapagos getting Spored would be a disaster for Victor. But here is the turn from Terran. That oh, is a Spore. He called it! Spored into the Amoongus and caught the Terrapagos on a switch in. So that actually is a pretty safe play for Terran when you think about it. The close combat from that Urshifu would not do enough damage to that Amoongus or that Terrapagos to stop it. And the worst case scenario is that you call the switch wrong and you just don't do damage that turn. And yes, while Pollen Puff into the lower defenses of that Urshifu is a big threat, I think taking the risk to try and catch the Terrapagos and get it put yeah. to sleep 
if you're trying to decide where do I put that Pokemon, you swap it into the Pokemon that cannot be put to sleep because it's a grass type. All that right. was a very great call from Terran there, and we'll certainly give him the opportunity to get back into the game with the help of his Iron Hands. Yeah, here comes the Iron Hands, which would threaten fake out pressure, but because Victor was able to get the Scream Tail in without being put to sleep, can now terrestrialize into the grass typing, which means it is no longer at risk of being put to sleep by Spore. You can see Terran had to switch out the Terrapagos there because the choice specs uh, Terrapagos was still at risk of being disabled, and now Amoongus has been encored into Spore. Except for <laughs> item of the tournament, Mental Herb activating, allowing Terran to have an opportunity to switch attacks here and maybe go for something else. But you know what? Terran was just like, I, I wanted to spore anyway. Yeah. Th thanks for the thanks for the cheer. I mean, I, I think that's a safe play again because at the end of the day, I think a lot of trainers, uh, like we've talked about already in this matchup, you want to terrestrialize the Terrapagos normally. Mm -hmm. But in this particular matchup, being resistant to spore is so much more valuable for Victor than being able to get the extra damage from the Terra Star Storm. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this does mean that Terran could just be encored again yep. this next turn, and this time it will stick. And you have to play very carefully around this Scream Tail with your Iron Hands as well. You don't feel comfortable using Fake Out, yeah. knowing that you could just be encored into it. Fortunately, there's not a lot of offensive threat just yet from Victor's side. The, uh, the fact that the... Uh, that Screamtail had to switch in and kind of got sort of played around with the Encore and Disable means that Victor wasn't able to get that lock in place. So it does take just a little bit of damage from the Iron Hands as Screamtail was unable to Encore or Disable anything just yet. It has forced quite a few switches, but has not been able to put any Pokemon into a lock. And now we're going to have to see if uh, Terran is going to be able to make something happen. Of course, using the Drain Punch does offer an opportunity to disable that super effective attack into Victor's own Terrapagos. The Iron Hands on Terran's side of the field could also switch things up with a Heavy Slam or a Wild Charge, and I do think that Heavy Slam would do considerably more damage to the Screamtail. Mm -hmm. For now, though, no Drain Punch on the board. All right, so the Terrapagos on Victor's side is protected from super effective fighting damage for the time being. Terran's Terrapagos takes a turn of sleep. Victor's Terrapagos takes a turn of sleep. And there is the Terra Shell being activated as Heavy Slam comes through from the uh, Iron Hands on Terran's side. So Terrapagos no longer has access to the Terra Shell ability to reduce incoming damage from the, from the Iron Hands or the enemy Terrapagos. While Terran does still have that should Terrapagos wake up. This is a tough position for both these trainers as it almost feels like Screamtail's utility has been expired at this point in time. You can't Encore or disable the Terrapagos until it wakes up mm -hmm. and gets that first attack in. And with Screamtail having already terrestrialized in this situation, I feel like it's the target. You want to mm -hmm. get rid of the Pokemon that has taken up the terrestrialization, has the Encore has to disable, just so it can't keep disrupting your team. As there's only so many times you can make this switch around uh -huh. Uh -huh. before Victor's own Terrapagos wakes up and starts to punish you for that slow play with the use of Calm Mind. Yeah, well, this Screamtail is by far the biggest threat to Terran's team, especially because Terrapagos is the biggest source of damage. Victor's Terrapagos will wake up and go for a Protect. That's a double Protect on Victor's side. But Ter Terran actually loves to see that turn of sleep. Yes. Had Terrapagos woken up there and gotten locked into an attack on Choice Specs, that would be horrible for Terran because then he would have to switch out that Terrapagos or risk having Terrapagos' only attack option disabled because of the choice specs. Regardless though of what happens this upcoming turn, Victor can pretty safely start going for those Calm Minds on his own Terrapagos. You do have to worry about the Amoongus and the threat of a Spore coming through there, but if you're confident your opponent's not gonna click Spore this turn, you just mm -hmm. wait, maybe sneak in a Calm Mind, protect the next turn when the Spore is probably coming, and then all of a sudden you can start disabling that slot again. It's a little bit of a longer game plan for sure, and it does re rely on you making the correct predictions here, but as long as the Screamtail is around, Terran cannot safely pick moves because you never know what you're gonna get locked into. Yeah, well, there's a Dazzling Gleam just to break 
the Terra Shell on the Trafagos, which does wake up and will be able to fire back with a Terra Star Storm of its own. That is the power of choice specs. Deals so much damage right back to Victor's Trafagos, which is having to waste time, well, boosting itself. It's boosting its special defense. It's boosting its special attack. But that is covered. That is a spore right into the Terrapagos. So congratulations. You got a turn awake. You got to protect one turn. You got to do a calm mind and then lost 70% uh, of your health. <laughs> And now you're back asleep. And this is exactly why I think the Choice Specs variant of Terrapagos in particular has become more popular than the Calm Mind variant because you can just wake up and ha even though you only have one turn before you have to switch off the field, mm -hmm. you can deal 70% of your opponent's health in one hit without having to take all this time. Now, Iron Hands is back out on the field. That's the thing, Karen gets one attack per switch in basically or else getting disabled by the Scream Tail. It tried to go for it, has to go for that because letting a free Terra Star Storm come through onto either of the Pokemon would be devastating. Amoongus deals a little bit of chip damage with that Pollen Puff and so Victor is going to have to figure out some way to maneuver the Terrapagos back in, ideally next to that Amoongus to get a Pollen Puff. Exactly, and it's not necessarily too difficult of a play if you assume that your opponent's going to, I don't know, maybe switch out a turn so that they don't get encored or disabled into something. But as long as Terran has the opportunity to deal big damage with Iron Hands or with the, his own Terrapagos, which is coming out onto the field, mm -hmm. you cannot make that switch. Ooh, okay. Well, Terran is going to go ahead and fake out in front of Victor's uh, screen tail while Terran switches back in the Terrapagos. This is going to be a clean double protect most likely here from Victor to try to scout out the Terrapagos and potentially force it right back out again. But this has been a little bit of a, a slow game here. And I think what Terran has done really well here is limited the ability of Screamtail to be as disruptive as you want it to be. Exactly. On the one hand, you don't want to be switching your Pokemon every other turn guaranteed <laughs> so you don't get locked into a move or you don't lose access to a move. But on the other hand, if you are playing this uh, revolving door of Pokemon, being able to predict what your opponent's going to do is so, so mm -hmm. important. And switching in your Amoongus on on the protect turn from Screen Tail means that it cannot be locked into yep. a move. It has the opportunity to make that choice at the beginning of the next turn. Yeah, well, here is again the Terra Star Storm trying to break through the protects on Victor's side. And uh, I hope these players have started taking notes on how many Terra Star Storms have been used. It only has a maximum of eight possible attacks if they have actually maxed out all of their power points here. But it's going to have to be, you know, this is just so normal here that we've been seeing Pokemon switching in and out. But this is the first time that Terran has left the Terrapagos in to go for a second attack, trying to condition Victor to only to never attack that slot. But unfortunately for Terran, Victor has decided, like, I am not going to risk it. I get to disable you now and I get to spore you. So once again, we have Terrapagos taking a little nap here, but at least Iron Hands is able to come onto the field and fake out the opposing Amoongus. So that way you have what, one turn of sleep mm -hmm. gone. It's really gonna come down to, I think, how long it is until this Terrapagos wakes up. Yeah. If it stays asleep longer than that uh, disabled lasts, then that actually works out kind of well for you as you're not using those power points yeah. and you're gonna be in a better position if it does come down to, okay, who has the most Terra Star Storm power points remaining? But I think for now, we are going to see a bit of a pivot into slower play. Mm -hmm. While this Iron Hands will have the opportunity to go on the offense this turn, unfortunately for Terran, I think it's gonna go straight to sleep. Ooh, there is a heavy slam, almost picks up the KO on Victor's Amoongus, but will survive, will be able to spore the Iron Hands and put that Pokemon to sleep. But now this Amoongus is getting very low, will be knocked out by any attack to come from Terran's Pokemon. However, Terran's Pokemon are both asleep, and you could choose this as an opportunity to regain your health on either the Screamtail or the all-important Terrapagos in the back. If you restore the health on the Screamtail, you're ensuring that your board pressure will remain throughout the game as Encore and Disable are so critical to Victor's game plan. If you heal up your Terrapagos, then all of a sudden your primary attacker is good and ready to go. I think, though, yes, we see the Terrapagos here, 
stay fast asleep. Of course, Disable was still active as well. Mm -hmm. You see the Amoongus switch in. Victor's own Amoongus, I think, will have to switch around yeah. this turn as it's at such low health. As soon as your Amoongus is gone, you just lose that ability to match your opponent's healing. And that's Absolutely. so, so, so important in this matchup. It is important in the matchup, and it's also important because we have gone a very long time in this game. And Victor currently has the Pokemon advantage, which if this game comes to time, will be extremely important. We see another switch here. This time, Victor, Victor is sending in that Terrapagos once again. Tazzling Gleam does a little bit of damage to the Pokemon on Terran's side of the Whoa. field, but Terrapagos wakes up. Oh, but it has to struggle. It's still disabled for the final uh, turn. How much recoil does it take? It will take 25% of its damage in recoil, but it will be healed. Oh, not healed no. up. Actually, the Pollen Puff just goes into Victor's Terrapagos, trying to pick up the last few hit points on that Amoongus that just switched out. Now, Terrapagos is no longer disabled, uh, but did just have to take a lot of recoil damage because of that. It did, and unfortunately for Terran, while Screamtail is guaranteed to move faster than the opposing uh, Terrapagos, it can just disable that move once again. Yeah, and Victor needs to start paying attention to his time. He is running very perilously low on time, and actually, instead of disabling the Terra Star Storm, disables the Pollen Puff to prevent the healing, which will allow Terran to finally get a KO and match the Pokemon count, knocking out Victor's own uh, Terrapagos there. But Amoongus' Pollen Puff is disabled. We do potentially have the ability for this burned Urshifu. Remember, remember Urshifu from yeah, way back when? I do. Has the ability to come back in here. However, it does also, because it's a Choice Scarf, it can be redirected by the Amoongus. It can be redirected by the Amoongus, but it can't be put to sleep by the Amoongus <laughs> thanks to that burn. And with so much damage down on the field already for Victor, I, I don't think you mind the burn as much. I think it's actually helping you out here, minus the little bit of residual damage you'll be taking in between turns if you stay on the field. But as we saw, Victor actually went for U-turn. Oh, that's an incredible play there from Victor going for the U-turn. Picks up a little bit of damage on Amoongus, will return back to the trainer. We'll have an opportunity to bring the Amoongus right back in. This will have an opportunity to add up more hit points for either the Screamtail or the Urshfu in the back, or even the Amoongus itself by switching back out and activating that Regenerator. But there are only 24 seconds left for Victor. If that timer hits zero, Victor loses regardless of the board state. So this is a very tough position to be. Oh, three we minutes almost left. Saw the three minute <laughs> warning there for the entire match. Well, Victor doesn't have enough time. I don't think we're even gonna get to the three minutes. I think it's gonna come down to time. Well, another Pollen Puff will bring that Amoongus ever so close to getting knocked out. Victor is clicking very fast, I will give him that. <laughs> but the, and the Dazzling Gleams and the Pollen Puffs are getting significant chip damage, but if this Iron Hands is able to wake up, it will be able to heal back quite a bit of its own health with a Drain Punch as well. I think that this, I think that Victor's win con at this point in time, assuming that we go to the game timer and not the turn timer, would be to wait until that last possible turn to switch out his own yes. Amoongus to take advantage of Regenerator to get its health back. But the big question then is, are you going to hit your own time Oh, you've first? got 12 so there's only seconds. Like 12 <laughs> seconds left. Oh, this is so oh. tight. This is so close. Two, Two minutes, minutes left. Okay. So like a minute per turn. A minute per turn, basically. There so, is a disable, so okay. the Rage Powder has now been disabled, which means that Victor can start using uh, Pollen Puff onto the Iron Hands. Yeah. There's some heavy slam damage. The, um, the Iron Hands has finally woken up. We'll deal a little bit of damage back to the Scream Tail. And there it is, Pollen Puff for Pollen Puff. These Amoongus are trading blows. All right, so if we're taking about one minute per turn and Victor is so close to hitting that your time. I am so stressed out. Oh, we <laughs> haven't even seen the one minute warning yet, though. I don't know if Victor has enough time A at this point. critical hit. I think he just needs to, you know, mash the A oh, button as quick down. as possible to try and get through this last possible turn. But as long as Terran has the Pokemon advantage in this situation, he has everything on his side. The game time, the turn time. We do not know what Terran Terran's time is. If Terran has a full timer, Terran can stall this out and win on time with the Pokemon advantage. 
We'll have to see just how quickly oh, he enters his input. I don't know if Victor got it. I, I don't know either. Terran looks like he's taking his time, though. So yep. presumably he has more time than Victor. The question is, though, will we be sitting here for another few seconds as he just burns that down? <laughs> uh-huh. If Terran is sitting there with a full timer, it, I, we hit about one minute. There's 45 seconds, so this could just be the end of... Uh, there would still be one more turn there if Victor be. got it through. Oh, no, we're, we're seeing oh, the turn. We're the seeing turn. the turn. Okay. Okay, so there's the regenerator recovery from the Amoongus switching out for Terran. Terrapagos coming in. Terrapagos is so oh, low. Oh, no. Screamtail's Encore will Encore. I believe that was Heavy Slam on the yes, Iron Hand, yes. so there will be no Drain Punch recovery. Surging Strikes connects onto the Terrapagos. That is going to be enough even Four, with the burn. Three. That will pick up the KO. All right, so we just hit the turn time, or the game time, excuse me. So this is the final turn. We will see these trainers have the opportunity to do one last turn input, but it will not matter. Oh, there's the heavy slam onto the Screamtail. That's so much damage. And Terran just recovered a bunch of health by switching out the Amoongus for the Regenerator. I think Terran has it. Because Terran should have more hit points. He should have more hit points, and that is the tiebreaker that, that we will bar. hit there. That green bar on the Iron Hands and the green bar on the Amoongus. Terran Birdie! Take back or else they would get Encore Disable Trapped. But Terran was able to do that every time and was successful for it. Here is an adjustment. Rillaboom has come out for Victor, which means if you thought we were healing up a lot of HP last time, get ready for the grassy terrain on the field. But Terran is going to stick with the Chiyu and the Terrapagos and that instant pressure from the choice specs. But unlike what we saw in game number one, this Rillaboom could potentially struggle to deal damage mm -hmm. if the Chiyu is allowed to attack. So I think Terran is in a very similar board state where he does have to walk in that Terrastalization on Chiyu or try and switch in that Amoongus maybe a little bit earlier on mm -hmm. to take the damage from that Pokemon and try and preserve Chiyu for later, assuming that it is the Screamtail still in the back of Victor's party. Now we have the benefit of knowing that that may or may not be the case, mm -hmm. but we'll see how Terran figures that out as we do Ooh. get a turn one switch. Is it the Amoongus? Oh, here's the Amoongus. The Chi Yu has switched out, which means that that Pokemon is going to be protected. But, oh, oh Terran is being extremely safe here, switching out the Terrapagos as well. I was about to say, uh, when you have a fake out user in front of your choice specs Terrapagos, it is very easy to break the Terra shell, and then this close combat would have been able to pick <laughs> up huge damage, if not the entire KO right there. Instead, Iron Hands is going to take half of its hit points on the switch in, and then that Urshifu takes the defense drop. And of course, with the Choice Scarf means it is going to have to switch out against these Pokemon. Now that the Amoongus is on the field, though, it is more than capable of trying to heal up that Iron Hands with a Pollen mm -hmm. Puff or just start going on the offense. You could try and land a Spore against that Urshifu if you don't think that there's going to be a switch in of the opposing Amoongus anytime soon. But I think the safer play here is to just assume that there will be a pivot from your opponent and try and get that health back just because of what we saw in game number one. You have to assume mm -hmm. that this could go to timer again, at which point you want your health to be as full as possible. Yep, managing those hit points is going to be critical, and even things like a critical hit on a fake out can add up over time. Of course, when you are facing down an Amoongus, one of the best and safest plays you can make is just to switch in all of your spore immunities. Your two grass types are out on the field, and this time, unlike the screen tail in game one, you get to preserve your terrestrialization for that Terrapagos in the back. Yeah, so we now know the adjustment, unless Victor decided to lead that Terrapagos behind, which is a very risky play in Route 9 of Swiss for sure. So I could never imagine leaving that Pokemon behind on this team. I, I agree. I absolutely agree. So I think Terran now has the information he needs to start planning his approach to this game moving forwards. Iron Hands can go on the offense here, could try and Drain Punch or Heavy Slam to try and get some good damage down on the opposing side of the field, but does have to work worry about the opposing Amoongus. And I think that's exactly why we see Chi Yu yep. pivot in here to threaten that Pokemon in the following turn. Well, some, speaking of big damage, Woodhammer in the terrain actually deals quite a bit to that Iron Hands. Iron Hands will be able to regain a lot of that health back with a Drain Punch. And now, 
Terran is waiting with bated breath to see if that Chi Yu is getting spored on the switch. And no, Victor did not go for the spore into the Amunga slot, instead, choosing the safer play to spore the Iron Hands. But that means that Terran has Chi Yu out currently. Threaten KOs to both those Pokemon, threaten up another potential burn if Terran decides to go for Heat Wave. Always or you could try and go for an overheat and catch something on the switch for some bigger damage. So the Heat Wave certainly is the safer play here, but we see that Urshifu return to the field to threaten the Chi Yu this upcoming turn. Yep, Urshifu wants to match that Chi Yu as much as possible, while Terran has been able to reposition the Amoongus for himself. Victor is also going to switch out both grass types. So Terrapagos and Urshifu here, these are the two offensive threats of Victor's team, are going to potentially be at risk of taking a heat wave. Now, both of these Pokemon are pretty happy to do so. Ooh, okay. actually switching in the Terrapagos into the taunt. Of course, you would be using that to try and blow the mental herb on Victor's Amoongus, but also catching that on the Calm Mind Terrapagos and blocking any protects from that Pokemon can be pretty huge as well. It can be pretty huge, but I think at the end of the day, you still are in a good position to remove the Chiyu from the field this mm -hmm. turn. Terran can only switch in the Iron Hands or the Terrapagos to take that damage, yep. and we've already seen how low health the Iron Hands has. Going for the redirect here on Amoongus is the safest way to ensure Chiyu sticks around, but mm -hmm. what is it going to do with that time? All right, well, the Amoongus is going to be happy to take that close combat from Urshifu and tank that very well. Chiyu will fire off a heat wave, but uh, it missed. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, you're oh, okay. Good. You're, the Terra Shell left. <laughs> the Terra Shell got okay, there. Okay, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I know, every time there's that little beat between the attack connecting, yeah. my heart skips. <laughs> And Amoongus actually able to tank both the Close Combat and the Terra Star Storm from Victor's Terrapagos. So that Terrapagos without the choice specs, not able to pick up the KO just yet. And now the Terra Shell is broken. Of course, the Leftovers hit points recovery and the Grassy Terrain recovery uh, will be able to start adding back up. But unfortunately, Victor can no longer protect to stall out for that recovery. He cannot, and Terran is also in a tough spot now that Amoongus is at such low health. If it redirects attacks one more time, mm -hmm. it will be KO'd this turn. I think you go for the redirection regardless Ooh. because that ensures you don't have to terrestrialize your Chi Yu yet in yeah. front of the Terrapagos, but still losing Amoongus this early on in the game, given how important it was in game one, is huge. Yeah, I think that's, that's definitely a big sacrifice that Terran is making here as the Amoongus goes down to the close combat will be trading off for the opportunity to get big damage from this Chi Yu. And overheat into the Urshifu picks up that KO. And that's actually a crucial KO for Terran to pick up, especially now knowing all four of the Pokemon that Victor has brought. That means that this Choice Specs Terrapagos in the back is potentially threatening to Victor's team. Now, Victor does be able is able to get that Terra Star Storm off, gets a little bit of health recovery from the leftovers, but is three hit points shy of reactivating the Terra Shell. Does have the taunt end though, yes. which means this could be a very simple fake out plus call mind play for Victor, whereas Terran will reveal the Terrapagos on his side of the yeah. field. And I, and I like this play from him because the Chi Yu is so critical in this matchup right now. Mm -hmm. You have to switch it out to get rid of the special attack drop. It, it's possible that Heat Wave would still do enough to pick up the KO on the Rillaboom given how much damage it's taken, but there still is that Amoongus in the back that you have to worry about. I think yeah. the safer play is to take it off the field, but instead it looks like Chi Yu is sticking around. This could be a very, very Good play for Terran to get the momentum back. Terran's Chiyu is sticking around. That is the heat wave, and it, it dodges the Terrapagos. It misses the Terrapagos. We'll pick up the KO onto the Rillaboom. So that is a key Pokemon down for Victor. That means there will be no more fake out pressure as Terrapagos will fire off a Terra Star Storm to pick up the KO onto Chiyu. So Terran sacrificing that Pokemon in exchange for the KO onto Rillaboom. And that can be big to prevent any kind of repositioning, especially when your last Pokemon is the Choice Specs Terrapagos, as Terran's is, Fake Out is extremely threatening because you have no way of dodging it. So we have Amoongus and Iron Hands as the final two Pokemon standing for yeah. these trainers alongside their Terrapagos. Iron Hands is unfortunately still asleep, still asleep, which means that Victor has the opportunity to start 
you know, getting that momentum back mm -hmm. puts the opposing Terrapagos to sleep as well this turn. Yeah, that's going to be a calm mind from Victor's Terrapagos. The Terra Starstorm from the Choice Specs not able to pick up the KO onto Amoongus, which means it will just be put to sleep by this score. And Victor has managed to maneuver this extremely well. Amoongus is still up and kicking. The Iron Hands is recovering a little bit of HP from the grassy terrain, but more importantly, Victor now has a boosted Terrapagos against two asleep Pokemon and has the option to start picking off these KOs. You prioritize knocking out the Iron Hands first as it is the Pokemon that has the chance to wake up this turn on Terran side of the field. Mm -hmm. Should be a very clean KO here thanks to Earth Power. Ooh. Oh, never mind. Able to hold on despite the plus one boost thanks to the assault vest oh, there. Still asleep, though. Oh, there's the pollen puff just to clean things up. Amoongus yeah. is like, don't worry, buddy. I got you. I, I, I got, got you. you. I got you. You're, you're a little too calm mind right now. <laughs> you need you need the, the aggressive Amoongus on the field. Yeah, so now this Terrapagos on Terran's side of the field has to wake up this turn, has to connect the Terra Star Storm mm -hmm. with the opposing Amoongus to get the KO. Well, <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. All right, so now we have a plus one, plus one special attack, special defense, uh, Terrapagos on Victor's side. Yes. That is slower than Terran's uh, Terrapagos. We yes. have seen it regularly be slower. Yes. We'll be able to break the Terra shell here this turn, which is the key component. Now, Terran has to hit multiple Terra Star Storms and has to probably get a couple of critical hits in order to force uh, to, to win this game or else Victor is going to force game three. Yes, and Victor also showcasing the fact that he can select Protect, yep. which makes it a possibility that Terran will run out of Terra Star Storms in this matchup. Mm -hmm. So right now it is looking favorable towards Victor. However, there can always be a critical hit. There can always be a upset at this point in time. While it does look like this game is entering the end phase, it's not necessarily over for Terran. Yep. And actually, we are not seeing a terrestrialization from Terran's Terrapagos because it would actually make Terra Starstorm weaker. Yes. And actually, uh, well, uh, uh, game three. Game three. Game three. three, game three. <laughs> yeah, uh, I believe. Just a support piece, but a source of damage. It seems like it would be a good choice, and it looks like Terran agrees with you, Gabby. Thank you. Uh, but no, seriously, I love the mix up here from both these trainers, keeping the Urshifu Rapid Strike in the lead for Victor, but leading that Amoongus to immediately threaten spores on these Pokemon. But then also on Terran's side of the field, Fake Out plus Terrapagos. That's yep. going to deal some really good damage this turn. You do have to worry about potentially taking a close combat or a spore from that Amoongus. So you have to think about how you want to approach this turn. But overall, you're in a much stronger position. I think Terran has to respect the threat of the spore more than the close combat because you still have the Terra Shell ability in place, which would have that damage and allow it to survive that super effective hit. And Terran does respect the threat of that spore, opting to fake out the Amoongus instead of the Choice Scarf Urshifu, which of course has no means of protecting from the fake out. However, because it was not faked out, it can switch out to the Rillaboom. The U-turn did break the Terra Shell. This grassy terrain will start recovering a little bit of that hit, those hit points and may be able to get the Trapagos right back up. But that Choice Specs does so much damage. The Terra Star Storm being a two-hit KO on that Rillaboom, maybe not quite after this grassy terrain recovery, but still immediate threat onto both of those Pokemon. However, again, we have the Fake Out threat. We have the Fake Out threat, and Amoongus is still available to go for those spores if Victor finds the opportunity to. I like what he's thinking here. You try to flinch the Terrapagos so it can attack this turn. And if that Pokemon switches, not wanting to be put to sleep, you target the spore down onto the Iron Hand so you ensure that it cannot attack in the next turn. A Heavy Slam or a Drain Punch here would be great for this Iron Hands, but if you're only guaranteed one... Wow. That's... All right, Terrapagos staying didn't in. switch out. No. Going to just take that fake out. Rillaboom will take the Drain Punch from the Iron Hands, and Amoongus puts the Iron Hands to sleep. So now, just by keeping the Terrapagos in, Terran is actually in an extremely strong position. That Rillaboom is very low, would faint to a Terrapagos uh, Terra Star Storm, either terrestrialized or not, 
if you're worried about the uh, Rage Powder from Amoongus, you can always Terrasalize your Terrapagos and start getting spread damage. You could, but there still is the threat of the Spore in that slot as well. So Terra made the correct call the previous turn, opting to keep that Terrapagos on the field, knowing that the Spore would more likely target the Iron Hands. But I don't think you have that luxury in yeah. this turn. It's only a, safe switch is, the, is Terran's own Amoongus, Exactly, though. exactly. And that's going to be a tough switch to make here unless Iron Hands wakes up relatively early on in this matchup compared to what we've been seeing to keep your damage output going. All right, well, there is the Amoongus switching in for Terran, and Victor will be retreating the uh, Rillaboom in favor of his own Terrapagos. And so now we have Terrapagos back out on the field, and this is actually unfortunate for Victor. May be able to get a Calm Mind, but again, these, these Terrapagos just keep getting threatened by Spore, which is one <laughs> of the big weaknesses of Terrapagos. It on is. A, on a setup Pokemon like this, you would typically like to be able to Terrasalize into the Grass type, so you don't get beat by Spore, uh, by Amoongus, but no such no such luxury for Terrapagos here. It is, and I think that's why both these trainers have opted to run Mental Herb on their mm -hmm. Amoongus, just recognizing when you are playing against a fellow Terrapagos user, you want to maximize the amount of Spores on the field, because every turn is asleep, that's turn you're not dealing damage, which gives you the opportunity to try and fight your way back in. Well, Victor has opted to go for Calm Mind for this turn as Iron Hands stays asleep. And ooh, the Spore connects onto the Iron Hands, trying to see if Karen was going to go ahead and switch that out for perhaps that Chi Yu or other Pokemon in the back. But it is going to be the return score from Terran's Amoongus onto Victor's Terrapagos. So that Pokemon is asleep and really uh, disencouraged from switching out. But Iron Hands could wake up at any moment now. I was going to say, you know, I think you keep the Iron Hands on the field for as long as possible here. Your worst case scenario is that you wake up, you use one Dream Punch to the Terrapagos, and then you go right back to sleep that's actually a pretty good turn for you because that will put the Terrapagos within range of a knockout from a subsequent attack. Oh. Great call here, though, from Victor. Will actually target down what was an Amoongus anticipating a switch, catching the Chi Yu to put it to sleep. That is huge for Victor's endgame as Chi Yu is that Pokemon that Terran brought to knock out the Amoongus to threaten mm -hmm. that Rillaboom. I was hoping to see Terran just keep that Amoongus on the field for a couple more turns and just accept that this is going to be another slower game, but trying to find the opportunity for that big damage, unfortunately, just does not get the opening. All right, the only Pokemon that is not asleep on Terran's side that can be put to sleep is the Terrapagos. So, importantly, Terran will need to find a way to get that Pokemon back in, but Victor's Terrapagos actually waking up a critical hit. One hit KO into the opposing Chi Yu knocks a huge threat off the board. Well, Victor just going to go ahead and continue to spore into the Amoongus that just switched in. And that is a huge wake up and a huge knockout for Victor. There is so much momentum on his side now. There is, as again, Chi Yu with that fire type damage was one of the best Pokemon to target down the Amoongus, to target down the Rillaboom that Victor brought still does have the Terrapagos, and to your point, this is a good opportunity to switch it out onto the field without it having to take damage, but unfortunately will be threatened by the opposing Amoongus still, Whoa. will be threatened by that opposing Terrapagos. You really wanted to save that Chi Yu so it could come in and get an attack mm -hmm. on the field. Just was one turn too early with the reveal. Uh, and Terran does not have the Terra Shell anymore, which means that Terrapagos is soft shell switches out for the Iron Hands to try and tank a Terra Star Storm coming out from Victor. But Victor doesn't take the bait, targets down the Amoongus instead, while Amoongus on Victor's side just keeps going for the Spore into that slot. Now, Terran finally gets a Spore onto Victor's Terrapagos, and this Iron Hands, I, I lost track of how many turns it's been asleep. That's it, okay. I almost certainly, uh, if not this turn, next turn will wake up. So I think this is the play if you're Terran. You go for the fake out into the opposing Amoongus. You stop it from putting your Iron Hands back <laughs> to sleep, assuming you do wake up this turn. Mm -hmm. And then the Amoongus goes for a Pollen Puff to break the Terra yeah. Shell on the opposing Terrapagos. And then you just have to hope that the Drain Punch is enough. But 
not going to go for that play. Instead, will try to get this Trapagos out on the field, but yeah. I don't know. Kind of a variation of the play to yeah. just try to get the Trapagos out on the field alongside the Iron Hands. Of course, that fake out prevents the score, but you're really kind of worrying about your order here. You really yeah. want Trapagos to have on Victor's side to have lost the Terra Shell ability. At this point, you do at least guarantee that you can get an attack off. Yeah. You know, only one of these Pokemon can be put to sleep this turn. That is true. And hear me out. You could also go for the Ter Stella Terra type on your Terrapagos. You know the opposing Terrapagos is asleep, mm -hmm. most likely will remain asleep this turn. Yeah. That'll give you spread damage. That'll give you the damage boost. That yep. will also give you the opportunity to double into the opposing Amoongus. But instead, no Terrastalization. Ooh. That still might put the Amoongus within knockout range of something from this Iron Hands. Oh, yeah, and Victor's Tropagos is still asleep. There's the Heavy Slam from Iron Hands. That picks up the KO. Victor loses the Amoongus, and Terrence finally no longer has to worry about any of his Pokemon being put to sleep. Now, there is still that Choice Scarf Urshifu in the back that is potentially threatening to this Tropagos that does have its Terra Shell broken. There is the Amoongus on Terran side of the field as well, though. So you have to try and find the opportunity to get Terrapagos and the Amoongus next to each other mm -hmm. when the Urshifu makes an appearance. It's a tough call here for Victor if you send in the Amoongus or the Rillaboom right now. Mm -hmm. Rillaboom gives you fake out, gives you yep. another chance for your own Terrapagos to wake up, but mm -hmm. go for a calm mind, start going for damage. Or Shifu, though, puts that immediate damage pressure onto the field and most likely forcing the opposing Terrapagos off the field as a result. Oh, fascinating. But Iron Hands can punish that play mm -hmm. by going for Wild Charge into that slot for a one-hit knockout. There is so much at play here. This game is not over. It's all gonna come down to how these trainers read this next turn. Yeah, is this Urshifu going to get real damage off this turn or is it going to waste its turn into an Amoongus? No switches. No switch, that's a, that's a Terrastalization. That's Terrastalization coming out onto the Terrapagos. Is this a double Terrapagos Terrastalization? I, I think it is, because I think Victor locked in the Terrastalization as well. Well, Terran's makes a whole lot of sense because there is no longer a Terra Shell. Actually, no Terrastalization on Victor's side, meaning that the Terra Shell will remain for this turn. However, these Surging Strikes are dealing good damage back. Terrapagos easily able to tank that. It will be up to this Choice Specs Terrapagos to actually pick up a KO on this Urshifu for Terran to have a hope here. That's gonna be damage onto both these Pokemon. Breaks the Terra Shell on Victor's Terrapagos, and here come the stars from above. It picks right, up the KO. Right. One hit KO with a critical hit. That is a huge Pokemon down, and the Terra Shell broken on Victor's Terrapagos. Now, Terrapagos stays asleep. That means it's vulnerable to a Drain Punch coming out from this Iron Hands, which does connect, almost picks up the KO, but nine hit points isn't enough to protect itself from Terran's next Terra Star Storm. However, there is still Rillaboom in the back, which means that you have Grassy Terrain back up for recovery and Fake Out Pressure. What do you go for this turn, though? You have to Fake Out Terra Star Storm. You have to Terra, Fake Terra, Out Terra Star Storm. You have to Fake Out Terra Terra Star Form. <laughs> Excuse me. And then you have to hope that you're able to power through a full health Iron Hands and the opposing Amoongus in the back of Terran's party. Mm -hmm. There is still a tall ask. Look at how little health is left on Victor's side of the field. That Terrapagos as well, I believe, has the opportunity to stay asleep for mm -hmm. one more potential turn. Odds are you do wake up this turn, but as we've seen in Pokemon, sometimes it just doesn't work out. There is one opportunity for Victor to win this, and he has to get this turn right. And Terrapagos has to wake up. Terrapagos has to wake up. It has to terrastalize here. That is the stellar Terra on Victor's Terrapagos that has been on the field for what feels like forever. It did get that one calm mind boost to also be able to boost its uh, special attack here. And there's the fake out into Terran's faster choice specs Terrapagos. Now it is flinching. It now Victor wakes up the Terra Star Storm is it going to be enough to pick up the KO on this Iron Hands that is the big question we'll get it on the Terrapagos but will it pick up the KO on Iron Hands not even close
the assault that's coming in clutch and then some iron hands one of the bulkiest fighting type pokemon in the metagame available to scarlet and violet showcasing Ooh. just why Ooh. it is making a return in the metagame at this point in time why did we forget about this pokemon <laughs> you know there's a lot of answers to that question but for now though the key pokemon for Terran in this matchup Drain Punch to KO the Terrapagos, another Drain Punch to potentially knock out that Rillaboom. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for Victor, without the Grassy Terrain active, I don't think there's even a chance at Woodhammer doing enough to deal damage for the KO on that Iron Hands. Not at all, and we can see Victor is locking in the forfeit, and that is Terran Birdie of the United Kingdom making it into day two in a tense, a long, a grueling three-game set. If anyone has earned